everyone, welcome to, <laughs> to our talk today. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My name is David Mora. I, I struggled with depression for about, I think, six years or so. Mm, yeah, six years. And I guess I'll say this that you cannot have happiness without, there's no happiness without suffering. And I think that's why we're so unhappy, amongst the reasons which are very many, why we're unhappy. So long as you keep us busy, and, and yeah, and, and, and happy. <laughs> towards happiness. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be sad. Yeah. So my name is Jotham Jeroge mm -hmm. and I'm a lecturer at Strathmore University mm -hmm. in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Mm -hmm. I lecture philosophy subjects specializing in contemporary philosophy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do many other things. Mm -hmm. I am an artist, I've produced a podcast, I write a blog, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I give many sort of talks, so mm -hmm. to speak, on, on pet projects I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Of late, it's been on friendship, the science of friendship, the science behind friendship. The science, okay. The science of friendship, mm -hmm. <laughs> not the art, so the, the, the science, art of friendship. The art, but there's a science, okay. there's a science with data behind um, mm -hmm. Okay. How long it takes to make friends, etc. And mm -hmm. um, but my interest in art is mainly because of a background in architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and so I studied architecture at University of Nairobi. I worked as an architect for two years, and then decided to switch to philosophy. Wow. And I've never looked back. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you, your, your, your passion for art started at when, when you did architecture. It was there before. That's okay. why I did architecture. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a very artistic family. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My mom used okay. to paint, my mm -hmm. uncles were carpenters, painters, I mean they were artists mm -hmm. in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, but my elder brother is like the true artist and he used to draw a lot and he's, he's like super accurate. He's an engineer um, and so for him his art is very realist, very precise. Mm -hmm. I mean he just reproduces reality as he sees it. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I like that. And then my parents ensured we always had very artistic books around the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a Bible we had that was just full of illustrations. And we liked the Bible because of the drawings. We n practically never even think, picked I it think, up to read. I think I know that. It was. It's a Bible. It has a yellow cover. I don't know. It's just okay. So we had two types. There's the typical one that people used to make memes. Uh, that news. has very simple line good drawings. Good news Bible. Good news. Good yeah, news good Bible. news. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we had that one. But then we had another one called, um, I think it was called the New English Bible. Mm -hmm. That, wow, I mean, that was art I at a very I high level. Um, mm -hmm. With very precise engravings, very well, mm -hmm. very well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we also had an edge of a witness. Bible around with all these nice paintings, your mm -hmm. witness paintings <laughs> of the of the of the last of the the last times, the end times, and mm -hmm. with, with fire and and with the harlot of, of, of Jezebel, you know those wow. <laughs> very very nice graphic things. Uh -huh. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, and used to watch a lot of cartoons. So art art came just naturally. Uh, from that part of the environment growing up. Yeah, it was very much a part of the environment. Mm -hmm. And my parents always facilitated. So mm -hmm. whenever I needed paintings, drawing material, they would just, so long as you keep us busy and, and yeah, and, and, and also, happy. It's also part of your genetics from what I'm getting. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a family thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from, from my mom's side. 
So feel oh yeah I was coming to that so feel I, 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 was, I was going to ask you feel yeah. free to to like push me back whenever mm. you feel like come I've come too much yeah. but I noticed that you mentioned a lot about your mother yeah but, yeah so what about your father now that's the intellectual side ah, so that's the language I, side nice combination uh, uh, so my dad speaks like maybe six seven languages local languages um, yeah I mean he 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 just goes somewhere it's enough for him to be in a place for four months and he learned the language so he was working with standard standard newspaper mm -hmm. and he's like his first job he was those guys who distribute newspapers mm -hmm. around the country oh. so he had this um he was a co-driver of of the main guy of deliveries yeah. who was a luo mm. and just wow. after like wow. six months wow. of working with wow. him he could speak perfect wow. Luo. you know so he's very inquisitive yeah and then there's a time we had a kamba house help mm -hmm. And he just picked up the language and just learned how to speak Kikamba. And, and so many other, and of course the other dialects, the other uh, dialects, Bantu dialects. So uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's that, he's a guy who's just, his mind is a sponge, he just absorbs information. Come and, on, come on. and so that's the intellectual side is from my dad the artistic side is from my mom bro hey I, I, I don't know if, if i if i comment on that i think i'll be selling you but <laughs> yeah that's such a like that's such a perfect combination because yeah. yeah imagine there's also some artistry in, in that you uh, absorbing um new information mm -hmm. and uh, and retaining it you know mm -hmm. that's that's also is art in itself so I think yeah, that, that was fun. Okay, something something else that just crossed my mind. Mm. You said there's the science of, and I know this is a bit science of friendship. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, a bit off topic. Any, yeah, but <laughs> let's just go into yeah. it. And mm -hmm. there's the science of, of, of friendship. Mm. Just a few things on that. So okay. That before we can start, we can continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of course, well, when you talk about science, um, uh, it has a lot to do with with cause effect relationships mm -hmm. that can be measured. Mm -hmm. Okay, cause effect that can actually be measured is a metric and so basically let's look at the metrics of friendship uh, which are basically uh, two which is time and context mm -hmm. uh, actually three time context and an activity the metrics of of, of friendship oh, okay. so mm -hmm. uh, it's so friendship is a factor of three things It's mm -hmm. about how much time you spend with somebody mm -hmm. but not just how much time but in what context mm -hmm. and you can have structured context and unstructured context mm -hmm. so a structured context is one where you you are there because you have to be there mm -hmm. uh, so like in class mm -hmm. uh, you, you mm -hmm. it's an event you have mm -hmm. to show up because it's a duty mm -hmm. and but you're not there alone the other people <laughs> so <laughs> the, the other people in that context and so you just just the interaction that comes because you're in, in a space where you have you have to be yes, there but there's human that. interaction or the workplace office etc and then uh no the mic the mic picks up it's oh, a, yeah. oh right. yeah it's okay, a so cardioid so mic so oh, it picks nice. up only what's in front of it oh nice okay. nice okay uh so you have that and then you have unstructured context mm -hmm. now this is where friendship really happens because it's a matter of the will you're there mm. because you want to be there yes. not because you have to be there mm. you've actually gone and looked for that person mm -hmm. and spent time with them yes and there's a, there's actually a measure of uh, when you spend 40 to 60 hours with somebody in a structured context mm -hmm. uh, an obligation kind of context mm -hmm. you will become friends but friends are the lowest level of friendship mm -hmm. But when you spend 60 to 80 hours, and the common factor there is 60, when you spend 60 hours with somebody in an unstructured context, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah when you actually we'll, go and look yes. for the person and you spend time with them, free time, if, it's, if you're a student in between classes, who do you choose to spend time with, who do you choose to go for lunch with, yes. who do you choose to walk home mm -hmm. after, uh, after school with, mm -hmm. 60 to 80 hours, you become close friends. Mm -hmm. And then best friends is usually after 200 hours mm -hmm. of both a mixture of structured and unstructured uh, oh. engagements because the structured engagements are important because mm -hmm. that's where you get to see how a person reacts conducts themselves to, and to under pressure mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. yeah somebody's work ethic somebody's mm -hmm. uh, yeah you get to see because structure is part of life and you get to see how they behave within certain structures mm -hmm. um, so so yeah there's this oh, time there's oh. context and then now there's activity which mm -hmm. varies for men and women because men prefer men develop friendships 
when there is a physical activity yes. or some project, mm -hmm. some something that is uh, in between them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. for women, talking mm -hmm. is an activity. Mm -hmm. uh, so for them, yes, they become friends through activities, just like men. Mm -hmm. But they have an extra advantage, which is the easiest activity to talk. Yes. They they have it as as something very central. Yeah, just just for the for, for <laughs> just a note, there's something we're doing here. So women women just talk. We are not just talking. <laughs> we are doing something. <laughs> yeah, precisely. I mean, for us, we're meeting to yeah. uh, to discuss something. So yeah. there's a specific topic that has brought us here, mm -hmm. and that is a focus. Mm -hmm. And around that, other things come up. Oh. But two women can meet just to talk. Just to I mean, talk. They, they don't have a specific topic. They just show up just to start okay. opening up uh -huh. what's happening with you, what's mm. happening with me, and that itself uh, is an engagement. But for men, mm. it's it's there's this idea we need to discuss, and as we're yes. discussing it, other things come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, very very interesting. Wow, I'll, I'd go deep on that, mm. but I think I'll just look for you, you know, to discuss to on discuss. that. <laughs> oh man, I have questions. Mm. I have questions, and I think uh, yeah, rewatching this video, I think those questions will pop right mm. back up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I just yep. so you've you've told us that you do various uh, various uh, what do you call it? Uh, forms of art. You yeah. do podcasts. You do blogs. You said you're a painter. You do portraits. Yeah, I do portraits, yes. landscapes, Landscape, um, okay. in all sorts of media: watercolor, mm -hmm. acrylic, oil. I've done abstract art. I've done sculpting mm -hmm. with uh, with plasticine. Um, charcoal, uh, yeah, I'm sort of an experimental artist. I, like I try mm -hmm. all sorts of media, mm -hmm. and there are very few things I've not yet tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like that. So, in this, in these different uh, forms of, le let's call it expression, mm. uh, does it, uh, do they have different feelings, or are you just the same person, just doing a different thing? Yeah, it's, um, well, first, I don't, I'm not the kind of person who looks at art as a way of expression. Okay. Okay. Uh, for me, art is is I don't do art to say something mm -hmm. to about myself or mm -hmm. to say something about the world. Or, okay. Uh, for me, mm -hmm. art is a way of complementing the beauty of nature. It's it's imitation. Mm -hmm. Art is Im for me, art is imitation, mm -hmm. and imitation is the best form of flattery. Yeah. You know. So if I like yeah. the way you talk, yeah, or I like some gestures that you make. I will imitate them, yes. and that is a way of saying, of affirming that I like Whatever. the way you do this yes. thing. I like your style. I mm -hmm. like your uh, way of doing that. And so it's it's not really about me. It's mm -hmm. it's more about you, mm -hmm. and it's my admiration of of you that I'm expressing. Wow. But it's it's so so for me, and and that's why when people ask me, you know, what is this painting about? I just have no idea. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't about. I wasn't trying to say anything. I was just trying to. Say, I was just trying to. I was just trying to make you see how beautiful this thing is. Okay. Uh, from my perspective, yes. just as I've seen it. But it's not that I was trying to say that. Oh, this is my expression of peace or of conflict mm -hmm. or things like that. And, mm -hmm. and even when I go to art galleries about people expressing themselves, mm. I always just spend like five minutes. I already feel lost. And I, I just get out of there because uh, I don't feel comfortable using art as a means to an end. Okay, I think right. art is, is an end in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. and, and that's why I think art is... is yeah, uh, that's my perspective. I'm not saying that it's not good yes, to use yes, art yes. to express something. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's very easy to turn art into propaganda mm -hmm. when it's at the service of something else. Yes. Uh, art becomes, art bec there's good propaganda. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have done some things precisely as an expression, uh, as a, uh, there's an illustration book for children that I once did, mm -hmm. uh, teaching languages. So, uh, is it that the language could not be taught with just lines of text? Mm -hmm. It could, but it's taught better when it's accompanied by beautiful interesting images mm, and so the images were at the service of a message mm -hmm. uh, but i rarely do that mm -hmm. uh, i can't do it and i've done it but i rarely do that what mm -hmm. i like to do is just to see hey i like the way this thing looks it's beautiful uh, can i reproduce it mm -hmm. 
just just to imitate that and and say that you are beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. so for you mostly it's nature so it's it's nature it's mm -hmm. it's an imitation of nature yeah so I, I have a like like a poking question or another hypothesis to Dogo. So you say that, uh, and just to quote, you said mm -hmm. that you you went to architecture. Yeah, I studied that. Came out of it, and then you went into philosophy, mm -hmm. and you never looked back. Now, yeah, there's something interesting about that statement. Yeah. You mm -hmm. never looked back, and what you just said is that you your your art is mainly based on nature mm -hmm. now there's of course there's a, there's an aspect of nature in architecture mm -hmm. but what I, what I imagine what you do in architecture is that you draw physical uh, sorry man made things so for example mm -hmm. a house or whatever yeah, yeah. building roads you know, so maybe just out of curiosity is it that you or rather is it that you found some dissatisfaction in architecture you know the drawing of uh, structures made by man or is it that you found beauty in philosophy that drew you to to mm -hmm. philosophy and you never looked back mm. okay mm. that's uh, that's that's a question with many different angles mm -hmm. um i was not dissatisfied okay. with architecture okay okay i was mm -hmm. more satisfied with philosophy oh, wow right and right. even in architecture i liked the architecture that communicates nature best and mm -hmm. that's why one of my favorite architects is a guy called Glenn Market mm -hmm. whose phrase whose sort of motto is touch the ground ever so slightly you know touch the ground ever so slightly mm -hmm. that what you build in a place shouldn't be like imposing itself on the land uh -huh. it should it Blend. should sit on the land just as you, know, you can have a tree trees are very heavy and you know this when you cut a tree and you have to uh, get a lorry to yeah. take away the logs yeah. and the thing is struck because the tree is heavy mm. but it doesn't look like it's imposing yeah. its weight uh -huh. on the ground okay, okay. but that. you look at she buildings that. and I some see. buildings actually look like they're 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 forcing their way on the on mm. their weight on the ground mm. and others look like they're so they're just floating on the ground they are part of the landscape mm -hmm. and this is Glen markets um, this uh, this architect is called Glen market mm -hmm. his architecture is like that it's it's so much Part of the landscape and he likes buildings that are that are flat and spread out mm -hmm. and not not tall structures tall in fact the tallest structure i think is done is is two stories mm -hmm. by the way all his buildings win awards mm -hmm. he's a winner of something called the pritzker prize which is a nobel prize for architecture Object. building mm -hmm. uh, and 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 he draws everything by hand he doesn't use a computer he draws everything by hand yeah. And so again, uh, that sort of natural way yes. of, of um, but then you see when I why did I switch to philosophy? Mm -hmm. But my focus in philosophy was um, the philosophy of beauty. Okay. That why are things beautiful? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and I found a lot more to do there than to uh, design buildings. Which in Kenya, uh, first of all, architecture is a business. It's not right, an art. Right, right. Very few right. do architecture as an art. Right. It's a business. It's mm -hmm. how many square meters. Yes. And the most efficient uh, square meter representation is a, is, is a square, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you get all these very blocky kind of things. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that makes it look interesting, it's not, it's, it's, just, it's just cosmetic. It's cosmetic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you find something going like that, but what function does it have mm -hmm. other than just to try and uh -huh. and soften that square shape that has been imposed on a piece of land because it's the most efficient use of space. Mm -hmm. wow. So there's that side of it that I didn't like because uh, I'm very much artistic and, and that was too functional. And then also just in on the side of philosophy, I just found so many ideas that were so appealing. Mm -hmm. and, and to explore them and to share them with people and to break them down to a form that ordinary people can understand mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy is something I really like doing and that's why my favorite philosopher is he's not really a philosopher, he's, he's an intellectual, he's a writer, C.S. Lewis mm -hmm. and I'm doing my PhD on C.S. Lewis mm -hmm. and his defense of nature against uh, scientism which is um, science coming to say that the only thing nature is worth is what it can produce mm -hmm. uh, is utility okay, so let's cut down all the trees let's uh, mm -hmm. you know just waste the environment doesn't matter what matters is what you can get out of it functionally
and, and the guy really opposes that in, and opposes that in very many <coughs> of his works and that's what i'm focusing on this mm, as a phd mm, but yeah but the idea is nature and its imitation mm -hmm. nature and its appreciation mm -hmm. uh, and i found that a lot more in in philosophy it's human nature the nature of friendship uh, you know, yeah. a lot more than than the nature of how efficiently we can use space uh, but even in that there are so many ways there are people who do minimalist architecture so there's a, f a channel i follow called never too small mm -hmm. which is how can you live beautifully in the smallest space possible mm -hmm. so it is very much functional and you get folding chairs folding tables folding yes, this that, yeah. there's a lot of functionality <coughs> mm. in it but there's a lot of beauty in just seeing that you don't need much for in life yeah. you don't need much just mm -hmm. as minimal and anybody who goes to my office my desk uh, in the university or even just comes to my room mm -hmm. will notice that same minimalism mm -hmm. it's just just a, the the minimum expression of what you need to live beautifully mm. yeah it's not cluttered with, with stuff yeah. so <coughs> form form and function yeah there's always that debate which yeah. which follows which does mm -hmm. function follow form or does form follow function mm -hmm. and if you ask me i think uh, function follows form um function follows form it's subservient to form okay so uh, form a beautiful form is functional a beautiful form is functional um, and for beauty you need harmony clarity and proportion and clarity is precise it's not just jam-packed with with all sorts of things that have nothing to do with it it's the it's the simplest expression of being uh, it's clear you know, clarity of form uh, and then on top of that, you you have proportion, okay, so yes. mm. um, that each element feels balanced by something else, mm -hmm. and also harmony. That that balance is not that because there is one thing here, there has to be one thing there. Yes, it's it's complementary. That you can have one big thing here, but five small yes, things here. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it's not univocal. It's an analogous. Mm. It's analogical. Uh, is so so that's yeah so form wow. okay <laughs> yeah for me wow. function <laughs> follows form so form function, form comes first so and then function the piece, yeah i wrote wow. an article about that and it's it's uh, yeah it's there in my blog just uh, about uh, the old buildings in nairobi that have not needed to be destroyed because they were so beautiful they wow. could be repurposed for so many things the Colosseum, uh, you know, I've actually, <coughs> wow, I don't know. Okay. But anyway, Colosseum is in Rome, it's another, but just yeah. look at the old PC's house. It's precisely called the old PC's house. It was a house of the Provincial Commission of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Now it's a gallery. Oh. And before that, it was something else. You look at uh, Kipande House. Mm -hmm. From the name Kipande House, it was an office where you would uh, dish out mm -hmm. uh, IDs. Mm -hmm. Now it's one of the branches of KCB. Mm -hmm. And even before that, it was something else. But it's a tiny building. It's a kind of building that that same space you can put one of these towers and get a lot more money from that square uh, space you have. Mm -hmm. But because it's so beautiful, it can be repurposed to so many things. Uh, the the form is so iconic that it can embrace so many functions. Now the form is so iconic it can embrace uh, so many more functions. Uh, within it but something that is purely functional the moment the function ceases that's it the form is meaningless wow and we find this with with telephones with with uh, wow. yeah, i mean the telephone is a typical example that the main thing was functionality in the moment the functionality was superseded by something that's a lot more functional that's the it. more as flat screen is a lot more functional than buttons that have to go in and out mm -hmm then the buttons become meaningless they used to be beautiful and people used to say oh what a beautiful phone mm. with all these nice looking buttons but now there's a flat screen which is you know uh you can't say it's it's not your flat screen isn't more beautiful than my flat screen <laughs> they're both flat screens flat black screens yes. so again that's just a, it's functionality when functionality is more important than the form uh, the moment the function changes, the form is meaningless and yeah. it's no longer beautiful, just something to be thrown away. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Now you can wow. go on and on. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, 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 okay. 
So, Jotham, we've answered more, uh, very many of these questions. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether you've really um, touched on this, but, mm. wow, and this is, a, this is a poor segue, but so let's just do it. <laughs> um, this, this aspect of where do you get your inspirations from? But mm. you, you just say that you get it from nature and it's an yeah. admiration of nature. Mm. So I think you, you have, you have, you have uh, answered that question. So that's where you get your, your source of inspiration. Wow, just a <laughs> anyway. So, hmm. Wow, we've answered most of these questions. <laughs> you've answered most of these questions. There's one or two there that, that I yeah. thought about that you could mm -hmm. uh, add. Um, because of course there's inspiration, but, but there's perspiration, you know, they say that art is... Five, uh, inspiration is 5%. Perspiration is 95%, 95% yeah. yeah. So the, the, you have to put in the work. And mm -hmm. you can't just imitate nature. Nature is, is uh, first, is, is so rich that to try and imitate nature 100% uh, is, is a work of a lifetime. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a novel by, by J.R. Tolkien, a short story. He has a collection of short stories, mm -hmm. uh, Tolkien, the author of Lord of the Rings. So this one is called Leaf by Nigel or Nigel or Nigel. Mm -hmm. It's Nigel, Nigel. I think. Leaf, mm -hmm. Leaf by Nigel. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's Nigel, but uh, anyway, Leaf by Nigel. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a story about a man who spends his entire life trying to paint a tree perfectly, and he spends so much time just on one leaf, precisely. <laughs> like it's okay. Just okay. One. And but it's it's a it's not really about his artistic quest. It's about how. Um, friendship and life's responsibilities come first for him. Even mm -hmm. though, so so he's there, and just when he's about to finish one more leaf of the of the tree, mm. a friend comes and he needs a favor, and he's always willing to put down the brush mm. to sort out his friend mm. and then come back. So precisely, he ends up just with this one tree. He never finishes the tree because he gets interrupted so many times helping okay. other people. Okay. And then, uh, I'm spoiling the story for you, no. but the thing is that um, he dies and now has to be judged whether he will go to heaven or not. Uh, because, and there's an accuser, you know, the devil, mm -hmm. who says, this guy, you know, is just there with this guy, tree and everything is a tree, the tree is everything to him, you know, so... Yeah. Um, but then now there's a counter-argument that... that he could have finished the tree, he could have just told his friends to help yes, with you, exactly. Let me, I'm doing something exactly. important, mm -hmm. uh, this is more important than you, but mm -hmm. it was, he always made sure that his friends uh, were taken care of, uh, he sacrificed his life's work mm. to take care <coughs> of his friends, wow. and, and that's what gains him entry into heaven. Wow. Uh, the the leaf and okay. I think I don't remember how the story ends. Maybe now in heaven you he can spend as much time as he wants painting the yeah, tree. Yeah, eternity. Right, you. But uh, yeah, so so perspiration for me, one thing that helps the perspiration is music. Uh, oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, <laughs> okay, okay. So so it depends what part of the perspiration I'm going through. When I'm mixing colors, it's a very mechanical process. Uh, um, and so I course. listen to Imagine Dragons when I'm doing that. So. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> as in dragons because they have a mm -hmm. certain cadence to their music mm -hmm. and it just helps you not to get too bored or, or too frustrated at the fact that to mix this color I need to spend 10 minutes mm -hmm. just mixing the color to get it right and it helps me bear through the process of the hard work of mixing the colors mm -hmm. or of cleaning the brushes or of preparing the canvas which is usually a very painstaking process. Mm -hmm. uh, but then now when I need some sort of, just when I'm working on details, but very precise fine details, I listen to Passenger. <laughs> because Passenger is more uh, poly -poly. soft and, slow, and melancholic mm -hmm. and, and slow. Uh, he has some fast music, yeah. uh, but it's very instrumental. Mm -hmm. uh, also the lyrics are the kind that make you think. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of music you can listen to as you're focusing on just one square inch of detail and you're just there doing that in this. Uh, it won't, it's not like Imagine Dragons that helps you rush along because you don't want to rush that part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just want to spend time on that part and so you need music that's a bit slow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I listen to podcasts. Um, while you do your art. Yeah, while I do my art because it's a way of just multitasking because okay. uh, that I'm thinking as I'm creating 
Uh, but there are times I actually just switch it off because what I'm focusing on just <laughs> needs concentration. That yeah. let me finish this part, then I'll press play. Yeah. But it's, it's music. Music is is fundamental for painting, I, and I, that's why I find it hard to paint with people. I find I mean painting is a for me is a very solitary thing. <laughs> um, yeah, because. Uh, you know when you paint with people <laughs> I've painted with people before but I get lost in the conversation yeah. <laughs> and I stop painting because uh, my focus is a conversation yeah. uh, or, or, or I can't contribute to the conversation well yeah, enough while you're painting. Yeah, yeah, so, I was to, I was to, I was to ask the yeah. same thing like listening to a podcast while you're painting mm -hmm. seems a bit uh, you know, not common because I imagine you you you're doing your, your art and mm. someone says something uh, yeah. controversial. Or, or <laughs> yeah. Like, I think, yeah, yeah, exactly. That the mind is already <laughs> off there. No, no. So, yeah. but I I I find the the the, the aspect of music combining music mm. with uh, your visual art mm. uh, being more blend uh, blends in more. First of all, because music itself is a form of art. Yeah. And I think there are certain principles. Well. Forgive my ignorance that are uh, common between yeah. these two. So, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's those three that I mentioned clarity, mm -hmm. harmony, and proportion. Wow. It's, yeah. Wow. You don't want a song too long, mm -hmm. disproportionately long, mm -hmm. or too short. You don't want uh, the beats being too loud, they're not harmonizing well mm -hmm. with the guitar or with the, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any other instrument that is there. And it has to be clear. It's, uh, and, yeah, the, the message is clear, the melody is clear. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there are some that is not very clear unless you know music. Okay. And so, so it helps a lot to know how to play an instrument mm -hmm. or various instruments. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so I learned how to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. That's something that it was just... You didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah, didn't so mention so that. I, I play the guitar and the piano. Yeah. Uh, I tried drums, just couldn't work for me because you need to coordinate all four. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, actually, they say that if you can fly a helicopter, you can play the drums really well and vice versa. Because you have to use all four limbs yeah. uh, to control and each one is doing its own thing. Okay. Uh, so, and a helicopter is like that, that okay. each, each um, limb is doing something yeah. uh, to control the, the whole thing. Yes. Um, so... So in that, because of learning how to play an instrument, I can know that, hey, this guy has just changed key. Mm. And this guy is transposing, wow. Mm. Oh, this guy is doing that. So there are all sorts of, um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> there are all sorts of, of things that, because you have a complex enough mind, and this may seem like a contradiction, your mind is complex enough to see the clarity in something else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, that, well, just like, yeah, taste buds, if you are really, if you've really fine-tuned your taste buds to pick out very many different types of tastes, then when you're given a complex meal, even though it's all happening in your mouth, you can distinguish that this fruit, that is this flavor, mm. that is this mm. thing, okay. and yeah. So, so it's mm. it's more HD kind of HD <laughs> kind of experience. Experience yeah. also plays a part yeah. in that. Yes, yeah, yeah, experience yeah. definitely, because memory grows with experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, experience and memory work together. Yeah. So there's something interesting you said, um, and which which really captured my attention. You said that when you when you when you're painting, I I, I hope I, I got you correctly. When you're painting, you listen to passenger who's melancholic. When I'm painting details. Yes, who is melancholic and you mm. know slow and whatever. So maybe the question I'm trying to pose here is: Do your moods or your uh, state of mind affect how you produce your art. Yeah, 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 definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's what Boethius calls the muses. Boethius is a medieval philosopher. Mm -hmm. They call the muses um, these sort of angels um, that come to inspire you to produce something, and it's very moody. So, uh, but. And this is where now the perspiration, inspiration comes mm, in. Mm. There are times when you actually have to put the moods aside because something has to be done. Okay, uh, okay, so yes. Okay, I get work that. has to I be done yes. regardless of how you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do want to feel a certain way when you're producing something. Yes. This is where music comes. Mm -hmm. It elicits certain feelings much mm -hmm. easier. And so uh, if I want to paint something uh, colorful and bright and sunny and this, 
I listen to music that is also colorful and bright right, and, and right. that yeah. when I want to paint something powerful and and really aggressive, mm -hmm. I listen to aggressive, aggressive music, music that helps me do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so and when I'm painting a detail, which is something very precise and soft, I listen mm -hmm. to music that is very precise and, mm -hmm. and soft. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it, that the kind of music you listen to will determine the mood that will complement what you're trying to communicate mm -hmm. or, or what you're trying to imitate yes. uh, best. It's like accompanying you in your venture. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. Nice. So I, I, I think you, you, you caught me there. I was trying to get mm. to a point, but I think you just, <laughs> when, when you mentioned something about colorful and mm. I was like, oh, he knew, he knew what I wanted to ask. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, so, you know, you, you've mentioned all these things and there's something, uh, there's one thing you mentioned about architecture in Kenya mm. being a business. Yeah. So that included what would you say are the challenges the limitations that artists face uh, today mm. in our in our in our in our in our society and not only um socially mm. but also uh mentally emotionally because yeah. mm -hmm. i imagine like you said you, yeah. you can't paint with the people so yeah yeah sort of let's call it compromises your your sociability yeah. in a sense you you need serene you need a serene space you need to mm. be one with the yourself you need you know so yeah. what are what are some of these limitations or what are your um yes your limits to where you can get to as an mm -hmm. artist uh say mentally socially financially okay. yeah you know, yeah just. okay so yeah we t you would mention art uh, architecture as a business mm -hmm. and yeah being a business it's it's who knows how to sell the product best yes and who's best connected to sell mm -hmm. the product mm -hmm. and art has become like that also mm -hmm. it's it's not really about what you have painted mm -hmm. but who you associated with mm -hmm. the market mm -hmm. where you are and so um so as a business of course quantity quantity and size are what matter yes. uh, how many of these and uh, so be, okay and, and for a very practical reason that uh, the people who make the most out of art are those who sell to interior designers mm -hmm. interior decorators yes so okay. uh you've just built uh, radisson blue mm -hmm. you have 50 hotel rooms yes uh you can't just have the blank need, walls they need to be filled with they the all air. need to mm -hmm. be filled with something that is uh, aesthetic beautiful mm -hmm. not not the kind of thing that belongs in a museum mm -hmm. okay uh that where people go to see that piece of art mm -hmm. Uh, and to think about it because it tells them something about nature, it tells them about themselves, themselves. it tells them about the world, about society. Mm. So it's not art that you're going to sit in front and, and help you think about life. It's just something that's pleasing to look at, that, mm -hmm. that helps your eye rest when it's wandering around in a, in a room. Mm -hmm. And so you, oh, get, you okay. have 50 rooms, you need maybe two per room, two paintings per room. You don't want each room looking the same, you want a mm -hmm. bit of variation. Yes. So, and you want a one-stop shop. So you want to go to the guy who will give you everything. Uh, for this floor, the theme is horses. <laughs> so I want a guy who can paint 30 horses. <laughs> I want 30 paintings of horses. Uh, you, you're there with your painting of one horse that really <laughs> reminds you of the horses you used to dream of when you were in, in, uh, in school and yeah. this, and you really like this. and. And, and so a guy just says, look, I want 30 more. <laughs> just produce the damn things, you know. So ah, those artists man. who are capable of producing quantity, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're just prolific. Uh, they're the ones who make money okay. uh, in, the art, in the art space. But then now you have those who they don't produce that many, but they produce huge things. So that one painting that will fill the reception. Mm -hmm. Quality. Not only quality, mm -hmm. it just fills the space fills the space gives the room character mm -hmm. gives it a personality uh, just like yeah you can you can have this a lecturer we had in rome mm -hmm. and uh, so i studied in italy by the way yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you did that. mention that i studied boy. in italy uh -huh. and there's this lecturer of uh, ancient um, ancient history who used to come with there's always something striking that would give his entire appearance personality and himself personality he's a man 
a man. You mean his so, clothing, Amo? Yeah, his clothing. So he used to come, for instance, with, with a dark suit. Okay. So dark, it's like skinny, skinny dark jeans, mm -hmm. uh, nice tightly fitting jackets, mm -hmm. uh, and one huge button, a yellow button. I mean, it's not functional, <laughs> but it's a button. Buttons yeah. belong to clothes. Yeah. And it's just that huge button would give the whole person character. He's like, wait a minute, you know, so he used wow. to do things like okay. that. You know, he, he always had some item of, of clothing that would just give the entire composition character. Yeah. And sometimes you need that because yeah. you have a huge corridor. And so you're not looking for something that is beautiful as such that, wow, people look and say, wow. Um, they say, wow, because it's just striking. Mm -hmm. It's just striking. Yes. And... and and so you find those who can do the, uh, a way of being striking is just size. Mm -hmm. It's just huge. So you find people who just, who do stuff that is just huge. Mm -hmm. And this is why social media lets them down, lets those artists down. Okay. Unless you have a very good photographer. Mm -hmm. Because everything is magnified to the same size on your phone. Whether it, this was a huge piece of art, whether it was a tiny thumbnail sketch, but it still comes in that same uh, six by six yeah, square that yeah, that yeah, Instagram yeah, gives you. Yeah. Um, so unless you have a good photographer who can just show you, hey, wait a minute, this thing is huge. Just look at the size of a so so yeah. scaling scaling elements. Mm. You put a sofa next to a painting, mm -hmm. and you say, wow, that's a huge mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so in the art art as a business is uh, size and quantity. Now as a lecturer, I don't have time to produce quantity. Because painting for me is a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I get one hour to paint mm -hmm. every three, four days. Mm -hmm. So unless I'm painting really fast, mm -hmm. uh, in a week I'll produce three paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to be the kind. And I have a friend who's an artist who used to do five paintings a day. I mean, the guy was a professional artist. He made make money out of painting. Okay, yeah. So and for him it was quantity, five, five. Quantity. So in a month, the guy has 150 paintings. You know, and he just sells one month's work, 150 paints. So he used to paint for three months straight, and the rest of the year he's selling. You know, and the guy had 450 paintings in three months, and the rest of the year he's just selling and marketing. Yeah. You know, and he would make a very good living. Mm. So that's on one hand. And then there's another artist I know who uh, he does he does those huge things. So he does two huge ones. Each he sells for 450k. So I mean, he's made his million for the year. He just goes, that's it. <laughs> but that, to make something that is takes a takes a long time. Yes, of course. It takes a long time mm. to do something that big. Mm. So he just does two of those. So, uh, and again, I don't have the luxury of doing a three meter by two meter painting. Mm. Uh, I don't even have the space. Where do I keep that canvas? Mm. How do I even get it in the house or out of the house? Mm. You know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, so, so art as a business, you need it's it's a you're going to make money from art. You need to have those two in mind and to be well connected uh -huh, to the yeah, art yes, to the yes, yes. interior designer mm -hmm. or the art gallery. Uh, yeah, just being on social media really, you'll get a commission or two here or there. But it's a guy who wants you to paint a picture of their girlfriend because I think their girlfriend is the most beautiful person in the world and she's not. <laughs> Uh, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, no, no, paint my girlfriend. She's ugly. You know, just, oh, paint her. She's so beautiful. So there's only so much I can do as an artist. There's only so much I can do. I'll paint her holding a bouquet of flowers that covers her up to here, like this. You know, and, uh, yeah, so that's why I also don't do commissions. Cause, because I'm like, you think this is beautiful? I'm like, it's not. Uh, I know, and, I and, know, I, and the way you feel about something yeah, matters when matters you're painting. Matters a lot, especially when you're yeah, only producing. So, uh, you know, uh, unless you're so much. technically skilled that you can actually put your emotions aside and just do what has to be just done. Do it's a craft. Yeah. You perfected the craft so well mm. that inspiration matters little. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's a level I think many artists who want to get into art as a business need mm. to consider. Mm. Craft. Just perfect your craft so well that even on your worst day, you still produce good work. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So I, I like the straightforwardness, but mm. yeah, we shall, shall revisit. Mm. So let me, let me ask you this now. You've, mm. you've, uh, uh, yeah? are, we, are we good for time?
Yeah, we 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 just we just finishing. Yeah, actually, okay. So anyway, so we are uh, we've 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 uh, had our inspiration. We've sat down. We've made our mm. art and yeah. Okay, for you, first of all, what what is your what is your the aim of doing your art? So you have this final mm. piece. So one of uh, the first part of this question is how do you feel after mm. you have just made this thing? Or yeah, and the second part of it is what's now the purpose of it? Now that you've created it, it's there, mm. and you've spent all this time. So maybe three into three. What what was the experience doing it? Mm -hmm. What was the experience after you've had it? And now what's its purpose? Okay. Mm -hmm. The experience during is usually frustration. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I Just like, I that. mean, you don't go to the gym that. and find people smiling. If you go to a gym and everyone is smiling, that, you know, this is, is fake. Because <laughs> guys are cringing, guys are... The kind of sounds you hear in a gym or in a karate arena, okay. they're, not, they're not people laughing and giggling, they're people in pain. Uh, wow. Bones breaking, that... Uh, so the process is frustrating, mm -hmm. but it's it's a frustration that you know, you know, there's that kind of frustration where you say, I'm going somewhere. Okay. It's a process, mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere. Endurance? Uh, I would just say it's, 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 a, it's, it's a progressive process that you, you feel you're progressing, you're mm -hmm. making progress, mm -hmm. you're actually reaching a goal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now, depending on how hard that process was or mm -hmm. how engaging it was mm -hmm. and it always has to be slightly above your difficulty yes, level. Yes, of course. It has Challenge to be yourself, there. Yeah. And that's how you get a state of flow. Mm -hmm. A state of flow comes when what you're engaged in is of a slightly higher difficulty level than what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. It creates a forward leaning uh, attitude. Mm -hmm. um, and then now when you when you have finally reach a destination the feeling is great. You know it's, it, you feel nice, you feel happy, you feel accomplished, mm -hmm. you feel um, and there are certain works of art that you keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. That this is not about I finish them post 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 mm -hmm. post so mm -hmm. people can you know give me mm -hmm. a thumbs up and this in fact, on Instagram, I only follow artists. I, I, okay, there are people I follow because of moral obligation. If I don't follow them, <laughs> they'll yeah. say, you don't follow me. Yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll, <laughs> but, they, but I follow artists and I like it when artists follow me. And the only thumbs up and likes and love hearts, etc. that I appreciate are from fellow artists. Because they know what it takes to go through this. They know what it takes to produce this. Yeah. I, I follow you on Instagram, just by the way. Yes, okay. Just by the way. Just by the way. Yeah. Anyway. So, so, I mean, the, the value of a like from an artist, for me, especially one that I admire, mm. and one whose style is similar to mine, mm -hmm. is worth a lot more than a guy who wouldn't even know which side to hold a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so, so, there's that feeling of, yeah. And any creative process does that. Yes. And that's why uh, it's not just about painters and painters have a nice day they do but cooks you know anybody who's cooking or cleaner you know cleaning is a work of art mm -hmm. that you know is that satisfactory in fact they did an advert where they, there was a washing detergent they were trying to sell and they just couldn't they put all sorts of things in it to make it look nice and and but it wasn't selling until they put cameras on around 30 or 40 house housewives mm -hmm to just monitor their cleaning routine. And one thing they noticed in all of them is that when they finish cleaning, they smell the room or they smell the clothes. Okay. And there's, a, there's actually, they realize there's a smell of cleanliness. And they just put that smell in that washing detergent. <laughs> and it didn't matter whether it could clean <laughs> 10 times better than other things. It's just is that smell you associate with yes. cleanliness, with work well done. They mm. put it in that detergent mm. and the thing sold like, like no one's business, you see. Because oh, okay. there's that satisfaction of, yeah, so a cleaner is an artist, uh, a gardener is an artist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, any creative work, anything that involves making something that didn't exist before, mm -hmm. uh, has that process of, of the frustration of giving birth to this yes. uh -huh. reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the enjoyment of, wow, this is something that didn't exist and now it does. Now it does. Yeah, and, wow. and and that's why I really despise the work of Robert Rauschenberg, whose paintings white on white, as oh, the yeah. name can yeah, suggest, is yeah, he just goes to a store, buys a blank canvas and hangs it and says voila. Mm -hmm. 
art. <laughs> okay, it's a blank canvas. Yeah, but no, you mentioned that it sells. It sells because it's original. He's the first one who thought of actually okay. displaying a blank canvas. And it's so subjective because a blank canvas can mean anything to yes. anyone. Mm. So somebody who's not looking at art as imitation of nature, mm -hmm. but as purely self-expression, mm -hmm. can use okay. it to say that this white is an expression of peace. Somebody comes and says this white is an expression of nothingness mm. and it's nihilism, pure nihilism mm. is this. Mm. And so anyway, yeah, that, that there's, there was no process. Mm -hmm. But there's also the aspect of yeah. who did the art. Yeah, there's this thing of who did it and ah. somebody's personality really comes out, yeah. really comes out in, in what, they, what they produce. Yeah. Yeah. So Jotham, uh, in, 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 in the attempt to, of, of, of observing time, Hmm. We'll uh, just ask a few more questions. Actually, we we're just about yeah. done. But uh, in your experience, who is the sole beneficiary of this piece of art? So is it you? Is it the person who is viewing it? So in your experience? Okay. Uh, this might sound a bit cheesy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this might sound a bit cheesy, but for me, the sole beneficiary of my work of art, or my works of art, is God. Okay. It's because it kind of takes me back to that experience of me and my elder brother, mm -hmm. that everything he would paint, I would paint. Okay. So he was painting or drawing imitating nature. I was painting or drawing imitating him. And I would measure right. the success of my work depending on whether it has come out like my elder brothers. And is there also the, is the, the thing you mentioned about admiration yeah, and imitation. Yeah, admiration. And so uh, in the absence of my brother and now a direct link with God, is that God did wow. this and can I also do it? And it's like, you know, I did something like you, you know. That, <laughs> so, so, okay, it's got a beneficiary, yes, as a, as a father, yes, mm -hmm. that every father, every teacher um, gets the, uh, feels so rewarded, so happy mm -hmm. that their, you know, their student has done something mm -hmm. like them, has become like them, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, I can't produce a tree, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, to, to make something that, that assimilates what the creator has done. And that's why I like realist art. Mm -hmm. I like realist art. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried abstract art. And even abstract art, you're abstracting from nature. Yeah. You know, Sorry, what, yeah, you're abstract, not, abstract, abstract art is where you take just what is purely essential about a reality and express mm -hmm. it with as much force as the reality itself even though this one has so few elements and details. Mm -hmm. uh, Picasso did a lot of abstract art, and one famous work of art of his is the head of a bull, mm -hmm. which he made. He did many bull heads, but there's one which he made using the saddle of a bicycle and the handlebars of a bicycle. So he just okay, took the, the, the saddle, so the, so the, the, the pointed saddle mm -hmm. and the handlebars. Mm -hmm. And that's a bull. This like the simplest oh, expression of the head it. of a bull, that. but There's using... one at I love, the, 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 the lady holding the, the, uh, at the boardroom, the lady holding the kiondo and it's a horn, her dress is a horn somehow. Yeah, something like that. And, that's, wow, yeah, I yeah, like that. it, I swear so, it there. Huh? Something like that, so that's abstract art. It's, it's not literal. Mm, okay, nice. Uh, but there's something in common between that and the reality. Mm -hmm. But this one is such a simplified expression of the reality mm -hmm. and still captures the reality with as much impact. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so, so that's, of course, beneficial. I benefit the most and that's why the things that, mm -hmm. I mean, I rarely sell my art. Mm -hmm. it's, it's for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for me and for God. Yes. You know? so, wow. so I end up giving it as gifts. Most of the time it's wow. given it as gifts and stuff. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So Jotham, I want to thank you very much. For your time, <laughs> you're <laughs> a scientist, yeah.